Hey, what's up? I'm Jason Howell, and I am here with the Samsung Galaxy S Relay 4G. It's on T-Mobile's network, and uh, fans of slide-out QWERTY keyboards will probably want to take note of this review. It's $150 on two-year contract. I believe they have a rebate going on that as well. Uh, let's dive right into the specs. It has a 1.5 gigahertz dual-core Snapdragon S4 processor underneath, uh, which is the same as the Galaxy S3, actually, but it's running one gig of RAM versus the S3's two gigs. It has a four inch WVGA resolution Super AMOLED display. As you can see, there is a five row QWERTY keyboard that slides out underneath. It has eight gigs of integrated storage. There is also a micro SD expansion card slot. Uh, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, gyroscope. Uh, it's also actually packing NFC, which is a nice little bonus. Uh, five megapixel rear facing camera back there with LED flash and a 1.3 megapixel front facing camera. Uh, it has a removable 1800 milliamp hour battery underneath. And finally, it is sporting Android 4.0, which is ice cream sandwich. All right, so let's take a look at the design of the phone. First of all, the body is a little bit thicker than you might be used to. For a mid-range phone, you kind of see this sometimes, and obviously with the slide-out QWERTY keyboard, you kind of imagine that part of the reason for the thickness is the slide-out keyboard. Uh, they, you will notice on the keyboard, they actually fit five rows of keys in there, which is a definite nice uh, plus on there. And it was pretty spacious, although the keys are pretty flat, so typing really fast, I would find myself kind of bumping unintended keys at points. Um, also, if it's completely dark, the timeout for the display, the, the illuminated lights underneath the letters, is set at a second. And I couldn't figure out how to increase that. So if you're in true darkness, and you're typing with the keyboard, the illumination goes away if you even stop to think about anything. And then the only way to get it back up is to just hit a key and then delete it. So that was a little annoying. Sometimes sliding out the keyboard when you're holding it with one hand can be a little challenging if you aren't hitting it dead center because of the rounded edges of the, the side of the phone and this rubbery backing that I think is meant to prevent it from slipping. In this case, it ends up kind of making it a little bit difficult to slide with one hand. But after a few times, eventually you kind of get used to pushing through the center. Overall, the, the rubberiness kind of feels nice in the hand and all of the roundness throughout the device makes it feel, if not, if, if anything, a little bit smaller than it actually is because it definitely has a little bit of thickness to it. Um, I will say that the screen, when you remove it from your pocket, actually comes on pretty easily by itself. I think because this little button down at the bottom gets bumped as you take it out of your pocket. So many times I reach in my pocket and pull it out and the screen would already be on. Uh, that could be a feature. Who knows? Uh, now let's take a look at the display. It's not a super high resolution at 480 by 800. And on top of that, it's pentile display. So if your eyes are very uh, accustomed to seeing the crunchiness that comes along with pentile, my eyes certainly are, uh, then you're definitely going to notice those pixels even more than normal. But for a mid-range phone, I'd say that the display is actually pretty reasonable. I wouldn't say that it's overly bright and being outside boosting it up to full brightness uh, you know I still had a hard time kind of seeing some of the darker screens uh, but it was but it was okay nice saturation throughout which is definitely a characteristic of the super AMOLED uh, screens and uh, yeah so the display was okay all right now on to performance now this has a really nice processor underneath it's the uh, dual core Snapdragon S4 processor at 1.5 gigahertz and uh, I'll tell you, this phone actually runs really smoothly, it's particularly uh, when you're talking about the fact that it's kind of in the mid-range phone market. Uh, it performs very well. Uh, moving around TouchWiz, you know, TouchWiz just as a whole can slow some things down, but I actually didn't really notice it nearly as much on this as I have on other TouchWiz devices. Things seem to move uh, pretty fluidly. Doing things like gaming, of course, played Dead Trigger as well as Mass Effect Infiltrator. And uh, both games played really well. It was very smooth and fluid. Uh, browsing, of course, browsing the internet, uh, jumping around web pages was a pretty slick and easy process. Overall, I was pretty happy with how this phone 
performed underneath. Now for the camera. If taking pictures that you want to save is, a, is really important to you, you might want to think twice about this. Neither the front facing or the rear facing camera produced results that I was very uh, proud of. Pictures just kind of looked uh, unfocused, undefined. Some colors were, you know, a little unsaturated. It just wasn't a very pleasant viewing experience. And actually the video that came out of the phone was even worse. Uh, the video, I actually had to go back into the settings after I moved everything onto my computer to look at it to make sure I wasn't recording in 480. Uh, sure enough, it was set to 720p, but it didn't look like it. It looked very low res, even though it was recording all those pixels. So if uh, picture quality and video quality is important to you, I'd stay away from this phone. I did a decent amount of calling on it because some people use their phone to call people. And uh, I would say that the call quality was actually very good, if not great. And, and especially, also I used a speakerphone on a few occasions, very loud, uh, nice and clear. Just overall, I was really happy with the, with the phone calls that I made on here. Also, on top of that it offers T-Mobile's Wi-Fi direct calling. All right, now as far as storage is concerned, it's not gonna win any awards with eight gigs of internal storage, but you can uh, throw a micro SD card in there and expand that, so it's not the end of the world, but if that sounds low to you, you might want to reconsider. Uh, and speaking of uh, TouchWiz from a little bit earlier, the software is full on TouchWiz, and you know, I, I think my, my main complaint with TouchWiz at this point is that it really looks nothing like the ice cream sandwich that it's built on. It looks more like the gingerbread of data past and that's kind of a disappointment hopefully Samsung kind of corrects that but if that doesn't bother you and a lot of people love their touch whiz uh, this is you know this is sporting touch whiz in full effect and you get you know some uh, improvements like the notification uh, drop down has a lot of different toggle switches and and you get easier access to certain things uh, throughout the UI. So uh, keep that in mind. There's a good amount of extra apps and software installed on here when you purchase it, but you can always disable those in the settings if you really want to get rid of them. Uh, overall, if you like TouchWiz, you're probably going to like this phone. Now, as far as the battery is concerned, I was I was okay with the battery. It was pretty much middle of the road. I was able to get through a normal day on a full charge, and that was syncing email, Google+, Facebook, Twitter. Um, you know, there were a couple occasions where I used it for navigating, and actually in navigating, it definitely hit the processor a little bit more and, and in turn hit the battery a little bit more. But overall, I got through my days without having to think about charging it halfway through. Uh, it really did perform okay. And even beyond that, if you're really worried about it, as I pointed out earlier, it has a removable battery on the back here. So you can go ahead and pick yourself up another battery and you're covered completely. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the pros of the Samsung Galaxy S Relay 4G. It has a slide out QWERTY keyboard that makes it an instant choice for fans of this kind of form factor. Uh, its performance is excellent, especially for a mid-range priced phone. Call quality is loud, clear, and impressive. And it has some nice extras like NFC and Wi-Fi calling, to name a few. And now the cons. The display certainly isn't going to win any awards. It's a little bit slippery, particularly with one-handed use, and the cameras on this device are nothing to write home about. But overall, if you're on T-Mobile and you're looking for a slide-out QWERTY keyboard Android device, you probably can't do much better on that network. So I'd say if that's important to you, go ahead and buy it. Otherwise, if you're just looking for a phone on the T-Mobile network, I'd say try it. It might not necessarily fulfill everything that you're looking for, uh, but it's a reasonable phone and definitely worth checking out. You can catch my reviews on all about Android at twit.tv slash AAA. And thank you so much for checking out my review of the Samsung Galaxy S Relay 4G. Hey, how's it going? Uh, I'm Jason. <laughs> it just feels weird when I don't say what's up. <laughs>